So with um, languages, it's it's bound to be a bigger topic for us because we still want to set up certain races, both as factions or different factions within the races, as uh, as factions that you can actually progress with, um, and then get some benefits in terms of accessing their a accessing their la layer as you would other uh, cities or locations, right? So we talked a bit about like air quotes monster cities in the past. And I think the example we use, because most of you know EQ, is, uh, oh, interesting, is the idea of uh, runny eye. So imagine if you could faction up with the runny eye goblins more or split paw um, or any of the dungeons, to be honest. If you could faction up with them, get access to merchants, new quest NPCs, and the merchants may have things that you just can't get anywhere else. Quest NPCs, you could bank there, do a number of things that either based on their location may be ultra convenient to you, or it's just you're one of the folks that really likes all the lore and the completionist aspects of it. Um, so you're digging around to find something interesting. And it, it kind of taps into, in Velius, there is a, I think there is a better utilization of that, but not completely. Uh, when you look at like Kale and Thurgoodin and Sky Shrine, so always wanted to gain faction with places like Mistmore. Yeah, so it'd be stuff like that. I don't think we're going to be able to do everything all the time, always, but uh, it's it's something that we're interested enough in doing that uh, there'll definitely be some passes where we probably revise some content, maybe adjust some factions, maybe adjust a dungeon or something to work better with that concept. Yeah, but we're we're doing this stuff in kind of layers and it's something that isn't absolutely necessary for us to get people in and playing and so our big focus right now is getting in the base layer of content and the core functionality needed and then all of the additional stuff like client specific security and all of that to get people in and play with this in some manner I don't want to over promise or be too specific but essentially we want to hit our i don't think we made a promise but we want to hit on um getting people in because we said we really wanted to get people in with us this year and we're not super far off so that's our focus um and then once that's happened that'll be cool check um and then we'll be looking at continuing to flesh out all of the functionality and poc our proof of concept um and then push the proof of concept more and more and more while also basically working to move into the content scaling phase of things. With gaining faction, will there be limits, uh, prohibited combos? For example, goodly god aligned cleric could never gain positive faction with evil aligned places. So one of the other things that we've got to work on, um, but is definitely part of our intent, is to make it so that if you start as a goodly aligned cleric and you decide that you want to, for whatever reason, gain faction with that evil faction, uh, you can switch gods. So gods will function uh, similar to factions, but there will be limits. Essentially, there will be combos that just don't work, right? And the the god part of it is something we need to flesh out more as we go. But the the sort of core underlying system, the core underlying system is it's at a minimum will be a faction system. So it's not like it's completely it's not rocket surgery or anything that we're you know reinventing some crazy wheel or whatever for. Uh, we've got our class factions which you'll be able to progress with. And there's some really interesting characters, uh, a lot of detail being added in uh, their backgrounds and motivations and internal factional sort of interfactional conflict and things of that nature. Night Harbor is kind of a borderline gray, shady place. Uh, so it allows for a lot of interesting uh, conflicts, both between the factions and within factions. A lot of self-motivated characters here. And it's it's good for us because we're going to have people that may want to be more evil, people that want to be more good or whatever, starting here since it's a proof of concept city. Uh, but the the class factions then sort of provide a, a progression and uh, a way of learning about the various characters in the city and... and um, working through their motivations, but then the, there's also a lot of what uh, we've been calling essentially like narrative factions, which are on top of that, uh, which then like the Night Harbor Guard, or you'll run into the Red Mantles, which the Red Mantles work specifically uh, for the Langstorfian League, which runs the city. Uh, they're, they're a very, very powerful sort of global trade organization. And so the Red Mantles have a job that similar to the Night Harbor Guard, 
but they're not the same faction. Um, so as you can imagine, there's probably some conflict and intrigue there. And I mean, that's only one of like, honestly, a ton of little factions uh, within this one city. So yeah, we really wanna, we wanna see if we can figure out a way to make them all interesting and compelling without breaking the bank um, and really focus on, you know, simple storytelling mechanisms that leverage our simple core loop, our gameplay is pretty straightforward, but then uh, using that to, over time, uh, give you a sense of progression and the ability to unlock more of that narrative. So, who runs a part of town? Shady Gnome runs part of town. Sorry, did I call him Shady? Shifty. He is not a swashbuckler. White Travel said, I probably did 100 quests in EQ. I remember all of them. I did 10,000 quests in WoW. Remember about 100 of them. Yeah. Shady is his brother. His half-brother. 